Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, I'm Zeus. I graduated CRNA school of August of 2023. And since then I've been practicing as a CRNA and it's been a wild and rewarding ride. But let's rewind a bit. I wanna to talk to you about how I actually studied during CRNA school. So my program was front-loaded. That means that the heaviest classroom portion and didactic content happened in the beginning. And after that was clinical training. Now, many people describe CRNA school to be like drinking from a fire hose. And I think that's accurate. That was my experience. Material just starts piling on top of itself and it's easy to start feeling behind. So it's important to not just put in more hours, but to have a smart study method. So before school even started, I had read a book called Make It Stick. And this book completely transformed how I thought about learning. Now, the research in Make It Stick shows that passive review methods like rereading and re-listening, create a false sense of familiarity that doesn't actually equal true learning. Now, real retention and understanding come from methods like active recall with spaced repetition and effortful retrieval. Now, these techniques are cognitively more difficult, but they yield a deeper and more durable sense of learning. So I tried to build my study plan around these principles. And basically, my study system happened in three phases. So what exactly is active recall? Well, active recall is pulling information from your brain, not just rereading the information or re-listening to it. An example of this would be after studying, close your notes and ask a question like, what's propofol's mechanism? Or what are the side effects of propofol? Flashcards and practice questions are perfect for this. I liked to use a whiteboard. Now, space repetition is the practice of reviewing information at gradually increasing intervals over time, rather than cramming it all at once. According to Make It Stick, spacing your study sessions allows for some forgetting to occur, which actually strengthens memory during retrieval. And here's how a basic spacing schedule might look. During day one, learn the material. In day three, review or quiz yourself. On day six or seven, you review again. One week later, try testing yourself. Each time you come back to the material, your brain has to work a little harder to retrieve it, which builds stronger neural connections. In the first phase of my study plan, after every lecture, I'd go back and re-listen to that lecture. Whether it was pharmacology, anatomy and physiology, or principles of anesthesia, I would go back and re-listen to the recorded lecture. Now, you may be thinking that I had just said that the research shows that re-listening is a passive form of studying that is essentially ineffective, and that's true. But my purpose for re-listening to lecture was to make sure that my notes were accurate and coherent. I had to make sure that the material that I was using for active recall later on was correct. This was essentially a form of quality control for me. And once I knew my notes were solid, that's when the real work would begin. So typically the next day after lecture, re-listening to lecture and making sure my notes were cleaned up, I would get into my active recall phase. This was phase two. And for active recall, I would use a whiteboard. So I'd pull my PowerPoint slides from lecture. I'd go through it slide by slide, recreating the key concepts from memory onto the whiteboard. Basically, I would look at the title of the PowerPoint slide or a specific section on my lecture notes and try to redraw or rewrite key concepts from memory. Now, the first time doing this is painful. I'd blank out, I'd forget key mechanisms, I'd mix up pathways, but that's the point. That moment of struggle is exactly what's building stronger connections in the brain. And I found that after doing this process about four times, I had memorized the content from a specific lecture. Now this gets tricky, especially as new material starts piling on, it really becomes a juggling act. But I truly believe that this method of active recall using the whiteboard helped me with high performance during didactic. Now, as exam week got closer, I'd switch into group study mode. This was my phase three. And this was key, not just for support, but for testing my own understanding. I try to teach concepts to my peers out loud using the whiteboard as if I was the instructor. And if I couldn't explain things clearly, then I didn't know it well myself. And it was always helpful to hear my classmates' perspectives. Sometimes a classmate would explain something in a way that just clicked for me. So we'd quiz each other, fill in any gaps in knowledge, 
and help motivate each other through the stress. Now I want to talk about some setbacks. There are plenty of times where I had to skip my practice on the whiteboard or I wasn't able to get to old lecture material for a week because new lecture material just started piling on. And group study had only worked if I had put in solo work beforehand. If I came to group study unprepared, things just didn't click well. But looking back, the thing that I'd emphasize is consistency over intensity. You don't need to have a gigantic marathon study session the night before an exam. That's a recipe for burning out and low retention. Remember, studying for CRNA school is like a full-time job, and your study habits should reflect that. Consistent, focused effort beats cramming every time. And for me, this approach meant that I was going into exams feeling confident and not stressed. In fact, the day before an exam, I felt that I could relax, do a light review, and get a full night's sleep because I had already done the work. So to wrap it all up, here was my CRNA school study routine. For my first phase, I'd re-listen to lectures and clean up my notes. This was my quality control phase. For second phase, I'd use a whiteboard for active recall. This is where the real learning is done, and I'd repeat this every few days to reinforce. In my third phase, I'd finish with group study to teach, quiz, and fine-tune my understanding. So if you're in CRNA school or you're about to start CRNA school, trust the process. Don't be afraid to struggle because that struggle is the learning. I hope you guys found this helpful. Please drop a comment below and let me know how you like to study or what's working for you. Don't forget to like and subscribe and hit that bell notification so you don't miss my next video. There's more content coming up over CRNA life, clinical tips, and how to survive your first year out of CRNA school. Thanks for watching, guys.